I'm going to tie an old Roger Hill pattern, and the reason I'm going to do this is, number one, it's a good pattern, but number two, once again, it teaches you some, I can give you some ideas about small flies. This one is going to be a slightly smaller hook. And this is a Daiichi uh, J220, and it's size 24. And any curved hook, any shorter shank hook works. Uh, when uh, Roger Hill tied it, he used partridge K1As, but I think that's a real brittle hook, and uh, you lose fish. But I've got lots of ways to lose fish. I don't have to. Don't need any help with the hook. Yeah. Yeah, because everybody gets into all these hook dynamics, and I lose them. But this is a little smaller. And it's got a little bit of an offset point on this thing. To start my thread again, and like I said, this good broad's hard to get, but uh, one of the things is don't get into the trap of like six aught thread, eight aught thread, because none of that stuff, it's not relative. They just put whatever they want on it, essentially. It's, uh, if, if there's a denier system, dinar system, that's, that's true. Like this is 50 denier, the, the 6X Danville is probably 80 or 90, but I've seen some size 14 aught threads that have a bigger diameter than 6 aught threads. Just depends on who makes them. So don't fall into that trap. This is basically going to just be a Griffiths gnat with a trailing shuck on it. The thing that Roger Hill did that was brilliant on this, and the story I heard was he was uh, fishing uh, spinny, and these, and he's a damn good fisherman, and he was fishing spinny. Oops. Roger Hill is these kids were fishing and they were catching fish, and he wasn't doing very well, and finally went over there and he said, you know, what are you guys using? And they were using muskrat nymphs, but all the muskrat had gotten sh shredded off the fly and it was hanging out the back. So he turned that into a kind of trailing shuck on a Griffith's gnat and he calls it a stillborn midge. And this fly, I got this out of his book, which is out of print, the South Platte River Flies or something, which is a great book if you can get hold of it. It's one of the best books I ever read about fishing small flies. But, uh, is that right after the Gutenberg Bible that you picked it up? Or yeah, it? it's been around for a while. I'm sorry, yeah, whose book is it? Roger Hills. Roger it's called Fly Fishing the South Platte River. It's just a little paperback, but it's, it's a great book. I mean, any of the stuff he says applies to small flies on any river. And so he tied this little trailing shuck in. And what he did, and he's a local guy here, so you do learn from him. He just took a little bit of muskrat, he pulled the guard hairs out, which I'm doing now, and he liked having that little bit of brown halo, which is on the end of these. There we have it. Whoops. Okay, and once again, like the last fly we tied, when this hits the water, it's going to uh, really compress down. And the reason I like that, I don't know if the fish take it as a trailing shuck or not, but what I like about it is when that fly hits the water, you can see it because you've got that shuck before it gets wet. Okay, let's get this in. And now we're just going to put kind of a modified uh, Griffiths knot on the front of this. So I'm going to use, I'm not going to follow the gap and a half rule on this. I'll probably have this, these tackle may be a little smaller than a gap and a half. That's a standard dry fly rule. Let's just see if I can get one of these on that doesn't break. But I don't like it quite a gap and a half on this fly. It doesn't really matter. One thing that does matter is your confidence in the fly. If you think a fly works, it's going to fish better, it's going to work better. Another thing about this genetic hackle, 
you don't have to worry about concave side front, concave, you know, shiny side back, concave side front. You don't have to worry about any of that nowadays because the fibers are so flexible, these things will tend to, to be just fine. Okay, now we're going to take some of this not so good peacock, but the reason I like it is because it's not going to uh, fill up that hook gap. And once again, you got to be a little selective. That's a pretty good one. And the difficult part with this not so high quality stuff is I'm going to tie it in from the tip because that's where the, the material's better rather than tie it in from the bottom and sometimes it'll break too. And I have this prejudice where I like the hack, I, I like the hurls to sort of go toward the back and so I tie it in with sort of the curve of that, the curve of the hurls will sort of be curled around the stem and I do it with those move the curve going toward the back. That's once again, that's just total pers personal preference. Okay. This is just going to be your standard Griffith snap. And sometimes I'll tie this with no hackle at all. Okay. So where do you find that peacock curl? Like that? Just, you know, like if they have a bunch of tail feathers, mm -hmm. a lot of times you'll find it in it. And I don't know why this happens, but you know, like you'll see a big, uh, a guy will have a big jar of, of the full-sized uh, uh, feathers in. These will be in along with this stuff. And you can also use this, sometimes you can find stuff right up here. You're just looking for a shorter hurl. Yeah, and that's, like I said, for most fly tires, that's the stuff they don't want. But for small flies, like I said, you got to modify your thinking. And sometimes on a stem you'll find it down here. This stuff is pretty good, but sometimes on a stem you'll find stuff like that. Okay, let's get this wrap. The key here is is this hackle is so good nowadays that you can wrap it, you can palmer it so tightly around that hook shank that you don't see any peacock at all. And so, that's... I don't talk when I'm cutting that stuff, because half the time I cut the thread. I know none of you ever cut the thread. <laughs> oh. And like I said, the nice thing about this fly is, for the size it is, you can really see it out there on the water. Well, you're younger. <laughs> well, I'm lucky that I'm nearsighted too, because I wouldn't. It wouldn't be as easy to tie these. If you have to use a magnifier, the kind of magnifiers I would get would be a glass, but not with any black around it, just straight glass magnifier or those jeweler's glasses that you flip down. 